Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. If you have seen any of my other videos, you may notice that my background looks a little different. Well, I had a couple followers tell me that I should put some of the things that we have made together in the background and also maybe a few things that we haven't made yet just to kind of give a preview of what's to come. So I thought that was really exciting. I loved it. So I changed around some of my background. I also had a few followers tell me, Tiffany, you need to sit down. So I was like, okay, I will try shooting a video where I'm sitting down. So we're going to see how this goes. <laughs> Anyways, today's video, I'm going to go over how to make this adorable sheep. It's so cute. It turned out so well. So I had a follower message me and say that she's been trying to make this sheep pattern. She's just having trouble with it. So she had me look over the pattern and asked if I could make a tutorial. And I'm like, sure, I can absolutely do that. Well, I was looking over this pattern and even I was struggling to read through this pattern. And that's weird for me because I can read many different types of patterns. I'm very familiar with reading patterns. I even create my own patterns. So coming across this pattern where I was struggling to follow along, I was like, I completely understand why she wasn't having success. So I took what I could decipher from that pattern and created my own pattern. And in doing so, I uh, made the stuffed animal bigger, which I have a tendency to do with stuffed animals. I tend to take patterns of stuffed animals and just enlarge them. <laughs> it's kind of what I do. So here is the sheep that I came up with and he is so cute. I showed it to my daughter and I'm now struggling to keep her from stealing it because she was like, oh my gosh, I love it. And I'm like, no, you can't have it. <laughs> and so I ended up putting or sewing on eyes to make it more baby friendly. Uh, if you want, you can absolutely use buttons. Um, I was going to make a second sheep. Actually, I got this far <laughs> and this one I was going to put buttons in, but I was like, you know what? I can just get to the tutorial and explain the buttons. I don't have to make a full second one still going to finish it anyway, but I also wanted to show you the different color tones that you can use. I was looking through many different sheeps, finding out what colors they really are, staying real to color, though you don't have to stay real to color. Um, this one was a taupe and a cream, and this guy is a charcoal and a really light silver gray. Uh, the one I'm going to make for you is all cream, because there are sheeps out there that are all cream. So I thought, hey, staying true to color, it works. So you have options here, color options. So I'm not going to say like color, a specific color. I'm going to let you decipher that for yourself. What you're going to need to make this cute little guy. So you're going to need a size four non textured yarn. This pattern, I did the bobble stitch for the sheep wool. So you don't need to have a heavy textured yarn for this pattern. I know a few other patterns use that makes it super easy you just use one stitch all the way around and you're golden but this one i did the bobbles so we're sticking with the size four weight non-textured yarn okay this one i believe is i love this yarn from hobby lobby i kind of go in between my favorite size fours i really like vanna's choice that's what he's made out of. Vanish Choice Taupe, Vanish Choice, I think it's Fisherman. Uh, and then this guy, this guy was made with, I love this yarn colors. So see how I use two different brands, but they look exactly the same because it's both size four weight. Okay, so you're also gonna want a pair of scissors when cutting the yarn. You're gonna want, want a size F crochet hook or 3.75 millimeters. I like a smaller crochet hook when I am creating stuffed animals because it makes the stitches tighter. Uh, you will also need a yarn needle or a tapestry needle and that's to sew the pieces together. And I use polyfill. It's just what my favorite filling to use. You can use whatever you want. This is just what I have, what I use. So let's get started on how to make this little guy. When it comes to this pattern, we are going to start from the tip of its nose all the way to the tail portion. So we're going to start with the head and then move to the body. I like to give myself a marker tail. So I'm going to the body 
from tip of nose to end of tail, end of booty right there. It's going to be about eight inches or so. That's a very safe number right there. So give yourself about eight inches to start with. Put, if you want to put more, hey, we can always cut some slack off, right? If you have less, there's ways to get around that marker tail. It's not a big deal at all. So just a long marker tail. We're going to put our slip knot here in the work. Okay. Loop on your crochet hook, making sure that it, the tension is correct for that crochet hook size. All right. We are going to chain two or magic ring. Totally personal preference. We are working in rounds. So I prefer the chain two method. If you want to do the magic ring, go for it. You're going to put six single crochets in that first chain or inside the magic ring. And six, great. Now take your marker tail, yarn over, pull through that loop to indicate we have finished round one. Reinsert your hook. I work in continuous rows with the sheep pattern, so I'm not going to slip stitch and chain one. I'm just going to instantly go into the next space and in uh, round two, you increase across or you put two single crochets in each space. There should be six spaces, so we should end round two with 12 single crochets. Okay, so here's that first space, top of the first space. Going to cr single crochet one, single crochet two, all the way around, end with 12. And 12, perfect. We'll go ahead and grab your marker tail, yarn over, pull through, end of round two. Okay, round three, we're going to increase in the first space. So put two single crochet in that first space and one single crochet in the second space, repeating that pattern. So two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. You should end round three with 18 single crochets. Great. Okay, we ended that round. Yarning over, pulling through. We are in round four. In round four, we're going to increase in the first space and then put two single crochets. It'd be two, one, one, repeating the pattern. Two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around. You should end round four with 24 single crochets. So one, same space, two, then one, and one. One and one, ending round four, mark our tail. Round five, we're going to Increase in that first spot, and then three single crochets. One, two, three, and then repeat. Two, one, two, three. You should end round five with 30 single crochets. So increase in the first, one, two, and then one, two, and three. Increase. Then one, two, and three. Three. Perfect. Reached the end of that round. Yarning over marker tail, pulling that through, reinserting our crochet hook. Okay, round six through round 13. So round six, round seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13, you're just gonna put one single crochet in each space around. So go ahead and continue on for round six, 
through the end of round 13 and I will meet you at the end of round 13. You're just putting one single crochet in each space all the way around, okay? I will see you at the end of round 13. You've got this, good job. All right, we've reached the end of round 13, ready for round 14. In round 14, we're going to decrease the first two spaces and then single crochet in the next three spaces. So it'll be decrease, one, one, one. Decrease, one, one, one. So let's do the pattern together. So first space, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. In the next space, you're gonna insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. You will have three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. You just took two spaces and turned them into one, and that's a decrease. And then we're going to single crochet in the next three spaces. So one, two, three. Okay, again, decrease. Perfect. And then one. one and one. So repeat this all the way around with a decrease and then one, one, one till you reach the very end. You should be able to count 24 stitches. There'll be 24. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember each V is a stitch. You should end with 24. I will see you at the end of round 14. Two and three. Taking our marker tail, pulling that through our loop. Round 15, 16, and 17 are going to be one single crochet in each space around. So same thing we did before for rows 15, 16, and 17. One single crochet in each space. I will meet you at the end of round 17. All right, I've reached the end of round 17. I'm gonna take my marker tail and yarn over, pull through. So technically, because I'm using the same color for the entire sheep, I could keep that tail and I could just keep going and not skip a beat. But for those of you who are stopping to color change, I'm just gonna color change with you. So I created the long tail at the beginning of the project because I was going to use it for the entire length of the sheet. For those of you who were color changing, you really only needed a marker tail about four and a half inches long to cover the head. So what you would do is you would cut just a small tail off of your working yarn that was attached to your ball. You're going to go into the first space Insert your crochet hook, yarn over that little bit that you just cut off. Gonna slip knot it all the way through, yarn over again and pull through and that creates a knot, okay? Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna hide this. Come in from the back of the work into that same first space. Yarn over that old working yarn tail, pull that to the back. Go to space number two, insert from the inside, grab the tail, and pull that. So now both yarns are on the inside of the work. It's invisible from the outside, so you can't see it, okay? Then you just tie them together, and that will also make an invisible color change too, so you don't have a weird color change. You have a very smooth color change, okay? and then you just stuff all that on the inside. Okay, you'd grab color number two. If you wanted your sheep to be all the same color, you would have avoided that whole part that we just did, and you're just gonna continue on, is what you will do. So enough for the body, so I can use a marker tail. Gonna want about eh, six, six inches slip stitch right there. Remember, it's okay if you make your tail longer 
You can always cut that off. Okay, tension it. I'm gonna insert so I can see my marker tail line right there. I'm gonna reinsert my hook right before in the space right before where my marker tail runs up. Okay, so underneath both front and back loop, so I have both there on my hook. I'm going to slip stitch to attach. So yarn over, pull through. So I'll have two on my hook. Yarn, pull through that first one. So you only have one loop left on your hook. Okay? Chain one. I'll leave that tail. And I'm going to single crochet in that first space. And that is my start. Okay, I'm going to actually put two single crochet in that first space. I'm going to increase. I'm going to single crochet in the next three spaces. So where you have that knot, go ahead and single crochet right in there. One, two, three. Increase. One, two in the same space, and then three single crochets. One, two, three. Go ahead and repeat that pattern of two single crochets. One, two, three, and I will meet you at the end right here, and you should have a total of 30 single crochets. Okay? One, two, and three. Perfect. We're in the space right before our attach and increase. We're going to take that marker tail, yarn it over, and pull through. Great. That just kind of closes that up. We are on the body part. You're going to, again, go continuously. We're going to single crochet in that very the top of that very first space. So one single crochet. The second space, we're going to bobble stitch. So if you're unfamiliar with a bobble stitch, here we go. You're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the next space, yarn over, pull through, so you'll have three. Yarn over and just pull through the first two. Stop. Going to yarn over, put your crochet hook back in that same space. Yarn over, pull through. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, stop with three. Push those over. Yarn over in the same hole, pull through. You'll have five loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and stop. Yarn over, same hole, pull through. You'll have two, four, six loops on that hook. Yarn over, pull through. So you'll have four of these half double crochets that we're ready to pull a loop through, okay? You have one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all of them. Boom. At the same time, I'm taking my finger and I'm pushing that bobble outwards. So it's kind of making this bump. Okay? I'm going to chain to close everything. And then in the next space, you might have to push this over to see it. You're going to single crochet in that next space. The one thing people are going to forget is that chain on the top. It's easy to forget that, guys. So. Try to go slow, don't forget it. So in this next space, we're gonna bobble. Yarn over, insert in that space. Yarn over, pull through just two. Yarn over, space. Yarn over, just two. Yarn over, space. Yarn over, just two. So 
One, two, three. One more time. Just two. Great. There's one, two, three, four, five on my crochet hook. I know I can yarn over and pull through all five. Push that bobble with my finger, push it out. Oh, there it goes. And we're forming. Chain and single crochet in the next space. Keep going all the way around. This is the repeat. Going to bobble, single crochet, bobble, single crochet, all the way around to the very end. The last space we are going to bobble stitch. So don't just put a second single crochet, okay? Last space, let's bobble, yarn over, insert, pull through, pull through two, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. Okay, so I got three again, two more. Yarn over, pull through, pull through just two. Yarn over, pull through, pull through, just two. So one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, pull through all five. Chain, and we're gonna take that marker tail and pull it through. Perfect. Row, let's see, that's going to be row 19. So we are now on row 20. Row 20, we are going to expand again. We're gonna increase again. So I'm going to put two single crochets in that first space, that first single crochet of that row. It's in between the bobbles, so you gotta separate the bobbles a little bit to find it. So right there, we're gonna put two single crochets. One, two. If you look at the top, there's a whole lot of spaces going on. So I'm only going to put my next single crochet in that chain space, okay? This space right here is actually the side of a stitch. We don't want to put anything there, okay? Nothing there. We look for the chain, and we're going to put our next single crochet in that chain space. And we're just going to put one in that chain space between the bobbles. We're going to put one. The next chain, we're going to put one, and the next single crochet, I'll we'll put one. The repeating pattern is going to be increase and then four single crochets. So two, and then one, two, three, four, and two, and then one, two, three, four. That is the repeating pattern all the way around. We want to end with 36 single crochets on the top, okay? I just wanted to make sure you knew where to insert your hook. That way you didn't end with a crazy large number of single crochets and then your sheep explodes <laughs> into a giant ball. That would not be good. two, three, and that last chain, four, perfect, awesome. Okay, we're gonna take that marker tail through. Next stitch is the same thing, guys, the bobble. So we're gonna single crochet in the first, bobble in the second, single crochet in the third, bobble in the fourth. So single crochet, bobble, single crochet, bobble. Don't forget that chain on the top of your bobble, super important. So here we go. One, and then bobble. One. Two. Three. And four. Chain. Next space single crochet. See how it just makes those cute little bobbles? They're adorable. Love them. Okay, and bobble. One, two, three, a 
lost it a little bit. There you go. Four. So one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. All right. Continue oh, and chain. Continue across. I'll see you at the end. Great. We have made it to the very last stitch on row 21. Go ahead and bobble in that last stitch. So one, two, three, four, and all together, and chain one. Yarn over that tail and pull it through. Okay, so just to count our rows. So before this first bobble, this row right here, that was the beginning of our body. That was row 18. So this first bobble is row 19. Then the row in between is 20, and this is 20, this bobble is 21. So that's indicating that each bobble row is going to be on an odd number row. The next few rows between where we just single crochet in each space around is going to be an even row. So what I'm trying to get at is round 22, 24, 26, and 28 are all going to be one single crochet in each space around, ending with 36 single crochets, okay? And then rows 21, 23, 25, 27, and 29 are all going to be bobble stitch rows, okay? I'm going to show you row around 22 and 23, and then you just repeat row 22 and 23 until you reach the end of round 29, okay? So here is round 22. We're going to single crochet in each space around, so single crochet in that space. The top of the bobble is the chain space. Okay, and the space in between the bobbles, the single crochet right there. The top of the bobble is the chain space. top of the bobble here. Take our marker tail and pull it through. Alright, and then this is going to be round 23, which is going to be single crochet in the first space and bobble in the second space and then repeat. Single crochet, bobble, single crochet, bobble. Chain one at the tops of all your bobbles. I'm really overemphasizing it because I know somebody's going to forget to do that. All right, I have reached the end of row 20, around 29. Decrease the first two spaces and then single crochet in the next four, and that's going to be my repeating uh, pattern for round 30, okay? So single crochet, or grab from the first space, okay, the next space, the chain space on the top of the bobble, grab, yarn over, pull through for a decrease, and then single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, oops, four. Perfect. Okay, and then decrease. Find that space above the bobble. And then four. One, two, three, oops, oh, come on. Four. All right, you should reach the very end of round 30 with 30 <laughs> single crochets that you can count, 30 stitches that you can count all the way around. 
okay? We have not started stuffing yet, so this is still hollow. That is still empty. I'm going to stuff after the next bobble. You'll see. But go ahead and continue on with a decrease and then four single crochets. Four. Perfect. Yarning over, pulling through. The next row is just the bobble stitch row. So it's single crochet in the first, bobble in the second, repeating all the way around. So I'll meet you at the end of this round, round 31. Okay, I have just finished with round 31. Before I dive into round 32, I'm going to go ahead and start stuffing. So I wait to start stuffing till, until I start decreasing. I'll do one row of decreases and then stuff and slowly start to add stuffing as I decrease. We want to stop here though because I want to make sure that I get enough stuffing. Here, I can remove that. Since I have my marker tail holding that loop stitch, I'm fine. I want to make sure I'm able to put stuffing in the head portion of the sheep. Okay. I don't want to get myself in a situation where I make my whole, my decrease is so small that I can't reach. It's so really just one hand is forming the stuffing, the other hand is kind of molding. So pushing the stuffing in and molding it about. Okay, perfect. So the important part here is the head, not so much the body part, because we can always get to that, but being able to reach and form the head part. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right in to round 30, 32. In round 32, we are in the single crochet round. So we're going to decrease in the first two and then three single crochets. And we're going to repeat that pattern all the way across. So And then because this row ends on an odd number or an even number, we're just going to go ahead and single crochet in that last space. Not a big deal. Okay, yarn over. All right, round 33, we're just going to repeat the single crochet, bobble, single crochet, bobble, all the way around. Okay, so we were able to end round 30 three with a single crochet at, in the last stitch just because we had room for it. So now we're in round 34 where we are going to decrease in the first two stitches and then do two single crochets and then decrease and then two single crochets. And that is the repeating pattern for round 34. We have just finished round 34. For round 35, it's just going to be a single crochet and then bobble stitch. But before I do round 35, I want to finish stuffing the body part of my sheet. Because look how small that hole is now getting. Now's the perfect time to finish stuffing. When you feel that your sheep is stuffed as full as you want it to be stuffed, you think that'll be a good squishy stuffed animal, then go ahead and pick up your hook. And again, we are just on the row of single crochet in the first, bobble in the second, all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of this round. Cool? 
See you soon. All right, guys, we are now on to the very last row. Last row is round 36. So what we're going to do for this last round is we're going to decrease in the first two and then do one single crochet and then decrease and then one single crochet. And that's the repeating pattern. Decrease, one single crochet. Okay, I'll see you at the very end of this last row. All right, we have reached the end of that row 36. Yarn over the tail, pull it through. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to slip stitch in the very first space. So find the first space, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch it all the way through. I'm now going to take my scissors, give myself a long tail, cut that off. Take that tail, yarn over, pull through, and pull. And that is my knot. I gave myself a really long tail here because I'm going to weave it in the spaces. So go into that space, pull it through, go to the next space from the inside, pull it through, next space. Pull that through. Just in and out, all the way around. All right, last check. See if. You want to add any more stuffing, I see a really light spot right there. So I'm going to add some more stuffing. There you are. Okay, so if you pull this one, nothing will happen. But if you pull this one, it cinches up all those loops and closes that round. Look at that. Isn't that pretty cool? Just keep pulling till you get it as tight as you want it to be. And you take the two strings and you just tie them together. Voila. There you go. Go ahead. And that's a lot of slack, so I'm going to trim that down. And insert my crochet hook. Any space, doesn't matter. Pop out the back. Yarn over those two strings. Pull them into your work. Now they are secure in that stuffing. Cool. And that is the head and the body portion of our sheep. Pretty cool. Oh, super cute. Okay, let's move on to the ears and the legs.